Hello everybody, this is Jeremy Taylor Thunder. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Autified's Mix Checker Ultra. This is their biggest and baddest version of their Mix Checker uh, series. They have Mix Checker, Mix Checker Pro, and now Ultra. Now this has everything that Mix Checker Pro had, plus a ton of new analysis features down under here. We are also able to resize this UI. They've kind of revamped even their old tuning that they had for their speaker emulations. I'm going to say that because I own the uh, IK Multimedia MTMs, the uh, Gen 2, and these sound very similar to what they sound like before you tune them to your room. And I own some HS8s, and they sound very similar to this. The general stuff that we have is essentially 10 different speaker emulations from everything from minivans to speakers, headphones. You have a giant list here, even PA systems. Now, this will also come with different settings. You'll have a stereo base, which is basically your stereo width. 100% is going to be really hard left and right because headphones don't have a phantom center. Whereas something like this little party Bluetooth thing is going to be basically mono, mono, minivans and stuff like that are going to have a different type of stereo bass. And I really like how they actually kind of keep this 50% and 70% for these studio style speakers because it does give you a more realistic view, especially if you're using headphones. Now you can totally use this on speakers. I have, and I was earlier, but I don't use speakers when I am uh, recording voiceovers and stuff. Now we also have the ability to automatically scroll between them and even have a really cool thing added where we have the ability to have a noise floor enabled. And this will give you a really nice realistic tone. I mean, you can, you can hear that thing. It's a really high quality capture of just noise. So if you're in a very noisy environment, this is a great way of simulating that. You have different mono features. You can mono everything out, either mono only the left or right, swap them, or even phase invert, as well as distortion because some systems like phones, laptops, and even TVs will distort. And you'll see some presets don't have that option. And that's mainly because those speakers tend to not distort. But I'm gonna say this, MTMs do distort. They don't have a huge amount of headroom. They have very good transient response for what they are, but they don't have a great deal of headroom. My uh, Apollo systems, they're all set to be like high output. They can distort them very easily. Now, the really cool stuff is down here where you have monitoring. But first, let's take a listen to this. Let's see how good this simulation is. Beautiful day, the sun beat down. I had the radio on, and I was driving. Trees flew by, and I was singing. Little runaway, and I was flying. Yeah, running down a dream that never would come to me. Working on a mystery. Wherever it leads, running down the dream. I'm gonna say this. The white cone and the MTM are pretty good approximations. Uh, this party Bluetooth and party Bluetooth medium, these things sound really similar to stuff that I use when I'm working events where the uh, lighting crew is like using these or some of the audio guys are using these. I hate the way they sound, but they sound really close to it. The minivan. I'm going to say it's not what I would assume is is average for like at least with the systems I use in cars, but it is kind of similar. Usually cars don't sound that great, but it's really cool. I really dig how you have this many options. For me personally, I think the studio speakers sound great. I think the uh, ear pods and the phones and these little party pill things sound really good. Personally, I think that their studio monitor emulation, or at least their reference, sounds great. I think their phones sound good. Their ear pods sound great. Uh, the little potty pills and even their headphones sound really good. You can also load your own custom IR. 
and even have a smart home system. It's really cool. I think I'm gonna go for the passive cubes. And make a mono. It's a great referencing tool. Now, what about these new features? And what we could actually do is go in here and choose them. So we have a gyno meter, which is basically a stereo meter that will tell us what will be going on. We have a loudness analyzer. We have a player to playback media and we have spectrum analyzer, a stereo imager and a dynamics control. Now this stereo thing is really cool. And if we want to see it bigger, we hit this little button. And what you're basically seeing is the frequency response from 20 Hertz all the way to 20 kilohertz. Anything in the center is mono and anything out wide is stereo, but this is also telling you where it is in the stereo spectrum. Is the guitar gonna be on the left? You'll see it here. If it's on the right, you'll see it here. So you can actually see as things come in and out, it gets crazy. Now, this is a really cool one, but I personally kind of prefer just seeing the stereo image. I don't worry too much about the content. I know that I usually keep my low end relatively mono and everything else spread out more. Uh, you have a loudness meter, which gives you measurements that you can actually choose. So let's say we're doing a TV broadcast. We know this is gonna be way too loud. And there's like no dynamic range. But if we have a reference loaded up, we can actually listen to the reference. And if we play it, Right there we see the reference, right? So then we can be like, hey, you know what? What about for music streaming? Well, we see that the reference is doing pretty good versus us. We're a little bit loud, so most music streaming software will turn us down. Now the dynamic range is a lot of a similar thing. We could see the dynamic range of our DAW and the reference and bring it up. You can see how in the reference there's a huge dynamic range versus in ours there's really not so much. Now this isn't a super dynamic reference, but it is a dynamic range reference. Now this is the original Running Down a Dream from Tom Petty. This is the remastered version as, that I have as a reference. And to do that you just click here, you go to your music or whatever, and you load it up. Boom, it's done. And if you click here you can actually listen to it. Which is cool, right? Now, another thing is you're able to actually zoom in and see where you are. You can highlight sections and have specific areas in a feed. You can just hit play and it'll play through the whole thing and repeat. One thing that I think would be amazing is if they add the ability to follow the DAW, where it follows the stop and start in the position. But one thing that I think is really neat is the spectrum view. So we're actually able to have our reference and our DAW view right here. This is going to be your track spectrum. This is going to be your spectrum deviation. Personally, I like the spectrum. And then this one is going to be your reference. Now you'll see what the differences between your tracks are from the reference. It was a beautiful day. The sun beat down, I had the radio on. So what I'm seeing is that the reference has a lot more high end, and I could hear it when I played it back earlier. Those hi-hats are super loud, right, but super dynamic, and I have a little bit more consistent low end, as well as more of a, about 700 hertz. So what I could do is take this and be like, hey, I want this to sound more like the balance of the reference, even though this is like a modern take of a really old song, so it's a completely different mix. But if you are referencing stuff that you do have as like modern music that you like versus your music, you can be like, hey, my low end isn't tight enough, which in my case, it really isn't, but mine is more of a modern low end. So I think maybe tightening up a tiny bit more 
and then doing a little bit of a cut around 700 to 100K, like just figuring out these frequency areas and then extending the high end because mine does kind of just taper down where this continues on. This is a rip from an actual CD that I bought. So like I see full frequency spectrum, but if you download an MP3, you do know that you will basically have this really harsh taper right here. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. The other things is you have input and output control and you have the ability to save and load your presets. This might not look like a lot, but to be honest, these are a great selection of consumer devices, mix analysis. I think this is a lot. This is exactly what you would need, even sound design and reference tracks. Overall, I think it's a really easy plugin to use and it has a lot of options. I would love to see if Audified would add an ability to have this follow the DAW. Maybe it doesn't work in Cubase and Nuendo. I own Cubase, Nuendo, and Studio One and Pro Tools, and uh, it doesn't follow any of them. So I think it's it's a really big thing if we add it to at least some of them. I know VSC3s can do that, and I know AAX plugins can do that, especially since everything has uh, so much linkability nowadays. I would prefer some of these to maybe have some timing constraints or even some control on um, the threshold. I find that the stereo view can be a little bit hectic if you don't understand it. I do use one of these a lot actually, all the time, so I do get it. But for a more simplistic view, I think the uh, gyno meter, I think it's called, is the best. I really like the loudness and dynamic section. The spectrum, if you get rid of this little section, the deviation, I think this thing is amazing and I love having reference tracks so I can listen to. I also like that you can just click and either remove it, add it, do whatever you want, and look at that, it stays the same. Anyway, that's it for this video. This is Jeremy Tilton the Doll. I will see you guys next time. Bye.